was a nice funeral, wasn't it, Al? <laughs> Come on, honey. Come on. He's dead, Peg. He's dead. <laughs> what am I going to do now? Oh, easy, Al. Nobody lives forever. Oh, I thought he would. He had a nice, full life. Now, be strong, Al. You're just going to have to face the fact your barber is dead. <laughs> Why did it have to be him? Who meant so much to so many? Why couldn't it have been somebody nobody would have missed? A wretch of a human being. Why couldn't it have been your mother? <laughs> well, I'm sure there is still someone alive who can cut all 12 of your remaining hairs for a buck and a quarter. It wasn't the money, Peg. Tony knew my hair and he cared. Remember that time I had that bad case of dandruff in 83? Yeah, I remember. The whole family gathered some coal and a carrot, and we made Frosty the dandruff man. <laughs> Tony was there to hold my hand through that rough time. Hey, going to Tony was a family tradition. My father went to him, and I went to him. I took Bud to him, until the other kids started calling Bud the bullhead. <laughs> and it broke my heart when Bud refused to go. I had to tell Tony Bud died. <laughs> We wept together. That's the kind of guy Tony was. Everybody loved him. Sorry I'm late, but I wanted to wait till they packed the dirt over the old butcher. <laughs> that old butcher cried when you died, bud. <laughs> I'll bet he did. Who else would let him put a cereal bowl on their head while he said, I'm gonna make you look like Sinatra? <laughs> bud, your father's right. We should show a little respect, even for the hated dead. And like my mother said when I married your father, if you can't feel it, fake it. Yeah, and if you don't care anymore, marry it. And... <laughs> now, I'd like a moment of silence for my barber. Excuse me? Amen. Well, now that Tony's worm food, I can get out of these funeral clothes. <laughs> oh, Dad, you know how I've been um, bothering you about a sports car? Well, forget it. I want a hearse. I was just cruising around the cemetery with Boris, the driver. Oh, God, was it cool. And on Friday night, he's taking me out and promised to have a real dead body in it. <laughs> but Mom said it's wrong to use a guy for his hearse, so can I have one of my own, please? Well, Al, she has been doing better in school. <laughs> Why am I thinking they buried the wrong guy? <laughs> Cheer up, honey. Your day will come. And when it does, you'll be glad we have that hearse. <laughs> Al, I know you were at a funeral and all, so this might be a bad time to bring this up, but did you happen to come into our yard in the middle of the night and steal all our roses? <laughs> Steve, I've never been so insulted in my life. Well, and I guess this isn't your watch. <laughs> so who died? A close family member? Nah, worse, my barber. And it hit me pretty hard, too. Now, who am I going to get to cut my hair? Well, why don't you just do what you do with your lawn? Park your car on it and let it die. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mars. But much like the hair on your legs, I need the help of a trained professional. <laughs> look, Al, why don't you just go to my barber? Well, thanks, Steve, but I still care how I look. <laughs> Dead. Why don't you just go to Kelly's guy, Mr. Albino? <laughs> or you could always go to Bud's guy at the Pimple Emporium. <laughs> Ask for Mr. Squeeze It. <laughs> Look how I live. Come on, Al. The kids will think you're serious. Honey, you are making a big thing over nothing. Usually, you're a big thing who makes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can get your hair cut anywhere. There are thousands of stylists in this city. Yeah, stylists. I want a barber with a barber pole, with an old dog that lays on the floor and scratches and bites at his fleas. Where am I going to see a sight like that again, Peg? Look next to me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> Al, why don't you just find some guy with good hair and ask him where he gets it cut? Well, sure, I'll compliment him on his great hair, and then he'll compliment me on my bedroom eyes, and we'll live together and make terrariums. <laughs> I'm going upstairs to be alone with my grief. Well, make sure to pull up the air wick. 